All right. Now I'm going to pick up from where we left off with the inflection circle. Let's open that document. So here is our quadrilateral that represents the instant in which we're analyzing the curvature properties of a four bar linkage. This is our four bar linkage moving. We have the canonical frame and we have the inflection circle. We're going to now construct the cubic of stationary curvature. Let's clean up the drawing a little bit. We don't need some of these lines, so we'll just hide them. These are the construction lines for the inflection circle. Let's hide these points as well. And now we'll start constructing the cubic of stationary curvature. The first step is to generate two points that define a line. And that will be we start with finding the perpendicular line through the moving pivot to the line along the input crank and then the same thing on the output crank. We find those points of intersection. We'll start with the input crank. And now we'll draw the intersection of those two coordinates. And that gives us the coordinates of a point. And that's going to be the start of our line that we're going to use to parameterize the cubic of stationary curvature. What we did for the input crank, we now do for the output crank. So we find these points of intersection. its coordinates, find the point that these coordinates identify, and there it is. And now this defines the line that we're going to use to parameterize the curve. This is important. We're going to color it purple. All right, let's clean up some of this. We don't need a lot of these lines anymore. This, this, and let's see what else we have. There we go. Hide these points as well. All right, now we're going to use a point on this line to construct a point on the, oops, cancel that, okay, let's undo this, put a point on this line, and that point is we're going to use to construct a point on the cubic of stationary curvature. And we do that by just um, reversing the construction that we just did to find points on this line. And now we find the points of intersection. And we connect those two points. And now we find the line perpendicular to this line through the velocity pole to find that intersection. And now, 
as we move, we're going to change that to purple. As we move the, um, as we vary the point along this line, this point will trace the cubic of station curvature. And the way we do that is with this locus command. So we select this point and this point. And there's the cubic of stationary curvature, or the purple. Now we'll clean this up a little bit. So we get rid of these lines. And we can get rid of this line. And get rid of these points. Now the, the value of all of this, I'm going to show you right now. Finding the inflection circle and the cubic of stationary curvature gives us a little bit of control over the points we're going to use in our linkage. So I'm going to get rid of this one as well. And this. Hide them. All right, so now let's select a point on the inflection circle. We'll select this one. We'll keep it on the inflection circle so that we can move it around. The, we can, we're going to see what happens when this point is used to trace a Doppler curve. When it's right here, this is known as Ball's point. Uh, points along the inflection circle have a locally straight line are locally straight because they're bending in one direction and then bending in the other. Here, it's not only straight because it's changing from bending right to bending left, but it also stays straight for an extra derivative. So let's construct this point and move it around. Okay, first thing first, let's create a polygon from here to our reference position. And let's color it uh, lavender. I'm uh, sorry, magenta. And now what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to copy this triangle onto the coupler of our moving linkage. And the way we're going to do that is to measure this angle. And then copy it here. Was I forget what angle it was. Zeta. There we go. Okay. And we'll draw this line from here to here. And now there's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to do it by measuring angles because this gives us a linear, oops, yeah, there we go. This is a linear construction as opposed to measuring this distance with a circle. The intersection of a line with two points in GeoGebra, as you start varying things, it can flip on us. So I'm just gonna stick with this, measure that angle, and I'll measure that angle over here, and the angle we, there's theta, Okay, and now draw that line. And we'll use this construction a lot when we're building uh, parallelograms. And so now we take the intersection of these two lines. And that defines our, defines our moving coupler with the desired coupler point. So let's make that a polygon. and then hide all the rest. Okay, let's see where are these lines. Oops. Okay, let me just, I seem to have forgotten that I had that selected. I have to select this. Let's see what line that is. Okay, we'll get rid of that. We'll hide that line. We'll this line, we'll hide this point, and we'll hide 
that point. Then we'll have these two angles as well. For all of these angles. And we'll animate our linkage. <clears throat> okay, so there it is. When it gets into the reference position, it lines up exactly with the point that we've selected. So if we move that point around, it'll change the dimension of our um, coupler. Let's see what happens if we put it right on ball's point. I'm going to hide our velocity pull. It's a little distracting. So that. All right. So let's now draw the locus of this point using our crank. And there it is. OK, so there's our locus. And we see it does. We see it's locally very straight. It starts to bend up here. But it does this little loop. So maybe we don't exactly want ball's point. Let's move it off just a little bit. And then run our animation. There we go. That's kind of a nice straight line. Oh, it's got a bit of a, an arc here. Let's try moving it somewhere else. No, that's not going to work. If we want to now, maybe we want to change our linkage slightly. Whoops. All right. Go right down. Let's rerun it. Let's put in the red. Let's just rerun it, see what happens. That's not bad. Doesn't do much for us with ball's point, but let's see what happens if we move ball's point all the way down there. Maybe that's pretty flat. That's pretty interesting. But it's it's this use of the curvature properties of a particular instant that allows us to get uh, trajectories of a coupler point that are nearly straight lines. Anyway, that's enough for now. Thank you.